Welcome back to my channel, I'm Aki. Did you know that Japan's got a bunch of secret customs and unspoken rules that most foreigners don't know about? Today, I'm so excited to spill the beans on the top 10 that I bet you will find very interesting. Trust me, knowing these will make your trip to Japan a hundred times more fun. Also, it might make your life even better. So please watch this video and enjoy it until the end. Let's go! First, the mystery of the last bite on the plate. Alright, picture this. You're at the restaurant with your Japanese friends in Japan and you'll find the plate with one bite left on it. And nobody's making a move for it. You might think, is there poison in it or something? But it's not. Well, here's the deal. Japanese people are super considerate. So nobody wants to be the one to eat that last bite. So it just sit there untouched. And when someone finally decides to go for it, they usually ask, mind if I grab it? Yeah, it's like an unspoken rule. In Kansai area, like in Osaka, they call this last piece the enryo no katamari, kind of lump of hesitation. So if you ever get the chance, say, can I eat enryo no katamari in front of Japanese folks? Can I eat enryo no katamari? Mm. I bet you'll get great love. Second, are there people in Japan who secretly clean the public toilets? Yep, that's true. From what I've gathered, a lot of successful people and business owners seem to have this habit. Why is that? Well, first in Japan, there's this concept called toku, kind of like good karma in English. And there are two types of good karma. There's yotoku, which is doing good things openly. And there's intoku, which is doing good deeds in secret. So for example, volunteering to pick up trash and being thanked for it would be yotoku, while secretly picking up trash without anyone knowing it is intoku. The fun thing is, intoku is believed to be able to accumulate good karma more than yotoku because it without seeking rewards. So it's kind of pure deed. So that's why some Japanese in Japan secretly clean public toilets. Now you might wonder what happens if you accumulate intoku. Well, we think your accumulated good karma builds up in the unseen world and eventually it can manifest into things like money, connections, good health, or learning opportunities. But at first, actually, I was uh, kind of skeptical about this, but it seems pretty legit. I mean, since I started cleaning public toilets, I've generally had some amazing encounters like this. So if you're up for it, give secret toilet cleaning a try. Totally recommend it. Third, interesting rule for preparing beer in Japan. Ever heard of pouring beer with specific ratio in your country? Well, in Japan, there is a rule for that. It's called a 7 to 3 rule. Basically, when you pour beer, you aim for 70% liquid and 30% foam. See, I ordered a beer at Izakaya the other day. It was perfectly 7 to 3 ratio, right? But why 7 to 3? Well, in Japan, it's believed that the ideal beer not only looks beautiful, but also like tastes delicious. And that's achieved with a foam ratio around 30%. I think this role reflects the Japanese characteristic of perfection in even the smallest details. By the way, it was a quite a shock to learn that such a role doesn't exist when I ordered beer uh, for the first time abroad. Fourth, why are Japanese people so uncomfortable with making eye contact? Ever notice how Japanese people don't really look in the eyes when chatting with them? Yeah? Sorry about that. Yeah, Japanese people usually aren't good at making eye contact. But why? There was actually a study at the University of Tokyo uh, comparing eye contact between Japanese and Finnish people. Turns out when Japanese people are looked at by someone, we tend to feel like they're angry or unapproachable compared to Finnish people. Isn't it interesting? In simple terms, direct eye contact sometimes can come off as kind of intimidating for Japanese. So try to avoid giving that feeling. We tend not to make eye contact altogether. Does that make sense? 
But personally, I think many Japanese people just feel embarrassing or rude. Because back in the day, it was considered disrespectful to make eye contact with superior samurai or shogun. So you're supposed to lower your gaze out of respect. So even today, Japanese people might still have this habit. So even if Japanese people don't make eye contact uh, when talking or toasting, don't take it like as rudeness, okay? Oh, speaking of making a toast, there's another interesting custom in Japan. The mystery of shifting glasses downward during cheers. Check out these two photos of me toasting. One is with a friend and the other is with my boss. Can you tell which one is with my boss? Yeah, that's right, it's this one. Because in Japan, there's a toast etiquette where deliberately shift your glass downward, allowing the glass of the person of higher states to be positioned higher during the clink. Yeah, it's a typical Japanese cultural consideration for hierarchy. However, being too conscious of this etiquette sometimes leads a funny problem. So both glasses keep going lower and lower. Yeah, if you easily recognize the state of the other person, you can adjust your glass accordingly during the toast, right? But when you are not sure about each other's states, and both are trying to be humble. What happens next? Well, humble Japanese people end up lowering their glasses more than the other person. And as a result, you end up with this back and forth game of lower than the other person. It might be happening just around me, not 100% sure, but probably it happens somewhere sometimes in Japan. Sixth, why do Japanese people watch movie credits until the end in a movie theater. Are you the type to watch the credits at the end of a movie? If so, you will like Japanese. That's because most Japanese stick around until the very end of the credits. Why? Is it because they want to check out the names of the creators, actors, or filming locations? Or they are hoping for a post credit scene? Sure, these reasons could play a part, but there's also a very Japanese reason why many people stay seated until the end. Because they don't want to disturb others who are still watching by standing up. On the flip side, some might even consider it's rude if someone leaves during the credits. So if you ever go to a Japanese movie theater, please remember that. Seventh, the magic clap to end the party. Guess what? In Japan, there's a magical clap that can instantly wrap up any event or festival party. It's called Ipponjume. And let me tell you how it works. So please be ready to clap your hands. So when I say yo, clap your hands in a 3331 beat. Okay? Yo! Okay, that's it. You did a great job. Okay, you wanna do that again? Yo! Then finish. Yeah, just like that, everyone claps their hands 10 times. No matter how lively the party was, this Ipponjime can smoothly bring it to an end. It's said that this gesture is a sign of respect for everyone who helped out or was involved in the kind of event or festival. And if you do it three times in a row, it's called Sanbonjime. But if you just clap one time, like yo, this is called Ichojime. If you can pull off these moves, you are practically a certified Japanese party master. Eighth, why are Japanese roads so quiet? One thing that often surprises foreigners when they come to Japan is how quiet the roads are. Yeah, you hardly hear any honking in Japan. For instance, when the car in front of you doesn't move, even though the light turns green, what do you do? And people in your country honk loudly? In Japan, many people simply give a gentle beep to remind the driver to go. That's it. But why? Is it because they are considerate? Yeah, well, that's certainly part of it. But actually, it's also because it's against the law to honk your horn unnecessarily. I didn't know that too. You could even get fun up to about like $150 uh, for breaking this rule. So if you're planning to drive in Japan as a tourist, better keep that in mind. Ninth, evolution of bowing in 
three stages. You've probably heard about Japanese people bowing, right? But did you know there are actually three levels of bowing? First, there's the eshaku, a little bow used when greeting friends or passing someone in a hallway. Then there's the keirei, uh, the most common bow used in various situations like when greeting customers or like showing respect to someone of higher states. And finally, there is the sai keirei, the deepest bow reserved for occasions like apologize, the ultimate sign of respect. So the degree of bowing reflects the level of respect. As of now, there is no bowing beyond 90 degrees. But knowing how Japanese people love to apologize, who knows, maybe in a few years we'll see a hyper psyche or something. Just kidding. 10th, the escalator rules in Japan are chaos. Escalators have a rule in many countries, like stand on one side and leave the other side open for workers. Apparently, most countries in the world do with stand on the right and walk for the left. So what about Japan? Well, standing positions differs between Kanto and Kansai areas. In Kanto, like Tokyo, it's left standing and right open. In Kansai area, like Osaka, it's right standing and left open. It's a bit complicated, right? But can I say something that will make it even more complicated? There's another area with its own unique rule. It's sandwiched between Tokyo and Osaka. Nagoya. Here. Interestingly, Nagoya encourages stand on both sides. Don't walk. I know it's chaos for foreigners, but don't worry. If you're ever confused, just follow the person in front of you and line up behind them. When in Rome, do what the Romans do. Simple as that. Well, today I've introduced you to 10 secret customs and rules of Japan. How would you like it? Feel free to comment and share which one surprised you the most. I'm very curious. Yeah, Japan still has many interesting rules and customs yet to be known, like this. So if this video receives a positive feedback, I'd love to make part two. So please let me know in the comments if you love it. So now let's wrap things up with Ipponjime. You remember? Okay, please be ready to clap your hands. Yo! Okay, well done. Thank you so much. Okay, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.